Hey guys, I know this is gonna be hard to believe, but it's been one year since we bought Main Street. It was exactly a year on January 10th that we signed those papers and we started tearing it apart. And what I wanna share with you guys today, and it's gonna probably be a longer video, but broken up into some sections, and that is our kitchen. I told you way back when we looked at this place in October, that um, we were interested in November, actually after October, we found out about it in November, we went for Thanksgiving to um, Texas to look for parts to make an unfitted kitchen. And this is what we got. We went back in January after we bought the house and we actually bought these cabinets. Um, I've actually showed videos of that, but I wanna go and kind of show y'all the pretty much finished project. We're probably 90% finished with our kitchen. Um, and it is amazing. Now I'm not here to show you guys that you need a kitchen like mine. What I would like for you to gather from this video is that you have a dream, you make it happen. If your dream is a mid-century modern kitchen, go make it. If your dream is to have a farmhouse kitchen or a boho kitchen or an unfitted kitchen or just a traditional, make your dream come true. I'm gonna do more videos on some particular things, on things that I learned to do and not to do about using old cabinets, but let's just look first and see what we got. Hey guys, we're gonna look at this. This is my range and my cook area and my unfitted inspired cabinetry. So one of the things about this house that's unique to this house is that it's very symmetrical. I have two windows on this wall, two windows on that wall, two windows in the front, and the room, the big huge space is almost a perfect square. It's almost 30 by 30, right? It was all divided up into sections. So in my brain, that symmetry needed to be reflected in my kitchen. And that's why on this wall, it is 14 feet across, and I have three four foot sections. I have four foot here, my range is four foot and four foot here. These cabinets, if you remember right, were dark walnut, and we took them and we separated them and made them into uppers and lowers. This was a project, if those of you watch it, I bleached the cabinets, I stripped them, I sanded them. We had issues with the paint, and the finish that ended up on it is a combination of bleaching, some waxes, and some stains. This is not everyone's cup of tea, these light, kind of bleached out cabinets, but that's okay, because it is mine. What I like and what Greg like and the feel we wanted for our kitchen was one of lightness and airiness. If you look, Greg and I put the brick wall up in here that these cabinets are against, there are many different colors of brick that you can use in a kitchen. Um, we have toured lots of homes in New Orleans that have brick in them and they come in a variety of colors. They're not all deep dark red. Some are light, some are painted, and we wanted this space up here to feel light and airy. And a lot of those decisions were made based on our floor. And guys, you've seen that we finished these old pine, not pine guys, cypress floors. But when the decisions had to be made to pick out the cabinetry, to pick out the appliances, to pick out the finishes, we didn't know how dark these floors were gonna be. Because we had to fill in a lot of holes, we had the spiral staircase hole, we had fireplace holes, we had to scavenge. If you remember that, we were scavenging floors out of where the bathrooms are, where we were gonna put tile. We didn't know if we'd have enough. So there was a chance we were gonna have to marry in other species of wood and stay them dark, just to marry it all together. So the decisions that we made based on those, those possibilities where we wanted light wood cabinets. Um, you're gonna have different scenarios when you're making choices. Some people like dark, some like painted. I like a combination. I wanna open this up. Um, these cabinets right here are really have to be functional. And oops, oh, that was one of the things I wanted to show you guys. When I was refinishing these cabinets, remember they were low, right? And these poles were right here. But when you raise them up 18 inches, if I would have thought about it, I probably would have finished that off and moved them to here so I could pull. Right now I have one some little bit of heel so I can reach them pretty good. Um, but that's just one of the things I've learned. But this is my cabinets. And I have it packed with china and stuff right here, but we really use them. They are functioning upper cabinets. Um, the um, bottom cabinets are just as functioning. And when you're choosing your cabinets for unfitted kitchens, you wanna make sure that they work. Like I have drawers like a normal kitchen cabinet. 
and I have cabinetry and all my pots and pans are down there. I don't think you're really interested in see that, but they do function. If you're interested in my range, this is by Big Chill. They're an American made company and it is a beautiful piece of furniture. But the reason I picked this piece of furniture was because it's one of the only ones that came with a matching icebox or vintage looking stove. Now we're gonna walk over there and look at that next. Hey guys, so this is my ice box. It is, I consider her a girl, and this is the range as the boy. They're a couple, they're married, and they go together. So this is the coolest ice box I have seen in the market. Um, you may have seen it sometimes on HGTV. That's where I saw it. I saw someone use it on an HGTV show, and I went and figured out who made it. Once again, it's the Big Chill Company. I get no endorsements or anything from that. I just want you to know in case you're interested. It's really cool, and I'm gonna show you how it opens just because I think it's interesting. You pull these and it opens. Look how messy my fridge is, don't look at that. But this is a real working, it's a refrigerator, but I like to color my ice spots because that's what it looks like to me. That's the freezer down there. And this right here inspired um, pretty much everything because I saw this refrigerator before I saw the range and then I wanted them to match. So we had to make in my um, desire to have an unfitted kitchen, right? I needed this area though. I'm gonna call it the work harsh part of the kitchen where you do all the cleaning and prep and everything. I needed it to be built in. I needed my cabinets to have organized and built in. And so we have the refrigerator built in. I have a trash drawer right here, which I encourage you to think about if ever you're designing a kitchen. Garbage cans are not cute. And that is really a very big help to me. I have storage underneath my sink. I have a panel ready. Um, dishwasher and have a built-in microwave right here. If you notice, I have very little lower cabinets just under the sink for cleaning supplies. That's a decision that everyone has to make. I wanted it all fitted, but you have to weigh your options, what works for your family. And then up at the top, we have tall cabinets. And then um, I like open shelving over my sink because there's no window. And that's something you might want to think about too. If I would have had upper cabinets here, over a sink, sometimes that feels a little claustrophobic. That's why I do open shelving above when, uh, above sinks that are, do not have a window. Now, I wanna talk about my tile. I absolutely am in, don't show my dirty dishes, go ahead. <laughs> I love my tile. It is supposed to look like old tin, which, who oh no, knew this place was covered in tin, but it's green and it's highlighted in gold and kind of a coppery color. It makes my heart so happy. I was terrified of using the green tile. I even did so much as I had the green tile, but I was nervous about it. I went to Vitapaint and they sell this special product that you can paint on tile, which makes it ability to paint it. And I was gonna paint it white. If it was too much being green, I had a plan in place. I put it up on the wall. I was gonna come back and paint it out white, but I didn't have to. And I love the way the green tile works. I love the way the green tile works with the brick. They seem to be friends and I like that. The other thing I wanna to talk to you about is this unit right here. I like to stack cabinets on top of lower cabinets. In my mind, this section right here balances the refrigerator section. Once again, it gives it balance and symmetry. That's what I wanted for this house was balance and symmetry. And I try to do it symmetrical on this side to match that with this area kind of centered in the middle. And so another thing about the color, this color is conservative gray. The color of my appliances is not white. One of the things I wanted them to do was look a little aged. So when I was looking on the website, they have a color called gray white, and it looks like an aged white. Sometimes I think when you get into some of the more yellowy, creamy colors, they kind of get too yellow for me. Well, this is a grayish white. So what I took the sample color to Sherwood Williams, and they put it under the machine, and they said the closest color they had that would match it was conservative gray, okay? Conservative gray is kind of under the white, but technically it's a green, but it's called conservative gray. It makes no sense whatsoever. 
And in different lights, you will read it as white, you will read it as gray, and you can read it as green. That's why paint is so crazy. But my whole house, everything is based on that color conservative gray because I was trying to match it to my fridge. And some lighting, to me in different times of the day, it looks like the refrigerator and my cabinets are the same color. And depending on different lighting, you can tell that they're not perfect. Now I'm gonna tell you, share with you guys what Sherwin-Williams shared with me. They said instead of doing the custom matching thing where they would have matched the little chip, that it's better down the road if you wanna match a color, instead of having that formula, to go in with a color that they have already, because depending on what Sherwin-Williams you might go to to match a color, it's easier with them because of the, I'm gonna get this word right, calibration, I think they said, of their paint machine. It will make the color that they have, conservative gray will be the same everywhere, but my custom color might not be, and over time it could be a problem matching it. That's why I went with the closest match that they had already invented. All right, so this is this area, the workhorse part of my kitchen. Um, I'd love to share more information with you, but if you've noticed, I'm real. I got kind of a messy fridge and I got dishes in my sink, um, but um, it's all real people. Life is good and um, we'll move on and I'll show you some other things in just a minute. You guys have already seen the mercantile cabinet and you already know how proud I am of Greg for everything he did to make this vision come true. The main thing I wanna to talk to you about in this mercantile cabinet is this is my pantry and you know that. And one of the things that when you're designing your kitchen, you need to remember is what amount of storage do you actually need? This is plenty of storage for Greg and I. It would never have been enough storage when I had four kids. We're empty nesters, this is what I need. If this would have been something I wanted with the kids, I would have had to have probably a separate walk-in pantry space, and this would have been the cute pantry in the kitchen, and then I would have had to have a place to store stuff. But this works for us, and it's an amazing piece of furniture, and I'm super proud of all the hard work Greg did. Now, the island Greg's gonna look at is probably, do you think that's your favorite piece, Greg, the island? Island look, Greg picked this out, because when we were doing this place, the building was built in 1906. And in 1906, it was kind of the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And this probably is later than 1906, but this is an old antique lift. And it raises and lowers. And all I have to do is turn this, and this side and that side move up like smooth. And it is amazing. I can take this piece right here, this lift, and we had this built, a frame built, and then we put the marble on top. Thank you, Steve at Quality Glass. He made all this happen. This was a project. Nobody wanted to do it, and Steve came through and made it happen for us, and we were just really excited about it. But it can go from table height to counter height to bar height. And I have used it all different ways. I have lowered it to be a table. We live with it at counter, and for an open house, we did it at... Um, counter height and we didn't have the barcels at it and it was like we had a charcuterie board it's been a fun project and we love this think outside the box and in, in our house we wanted it to be open even though this is a lift you can still see through it and it makes it feel kind of more spacious even though it's a kind of a heavy piece of equipment um but it's just cool and that's probably what the that's just probably the coolest thing we have in our house is this lift and the way our island moves up and down um but uh it functions, and that's what's really important. It's like things can be really cool, but you also want them to function. Um, you're gonna notice I have a black stool and a brass stool. I still haven't decided if I want them to be brass or black. So I painted one and the rest are black, and I'm still in, I'm still deciding. I don't know which one I like. Which one do you guys like? Do you think they should be brass to match all the trim and hardware, or should they be black to match the lift? I don't know. I like them both. We have a whole project downstairs that we're about to work on and they're possibly speaking movement around of these bar stools. So I'm kind of waiting to see how that comes out. The last thing I want to do, I'm gonna take you over to my dining room. I've already showed you a lot of stuff in here except for the table. Uh, if you remember right, I'm gonna walk over here right. Greg and I built this hanging shelf. The one I thought was gonna take half time of the Saints game to put together. 
because I, like a good wife, had everything organized, painted and everything, and Greg was just gonna come in and hang it. Six hours later, <laughs> six hours later, we finished hanging it. It was super crazy, super interesting, but um, it's exactly what I wanted. So if you watched one of the videos when we went to Round Top back in the fall, I was looking for this round table. I have one picture of it in the before. Maybe Greg can find it and put it in there for you. It's very dark, kind of a mahogany color. And I'm gonna pull these chairs out. It had, at the bottom, because in its original thing, this table opened up to, I think it had two two foot section so almost eight feet wide it opened up to and it had coming out these came out in spokes going around they were like out like at least six to eight more inches greg cut it off for me and we took this little piece right here off and added it back but what i did hey rizzy we helped the video i came in and while we were at round top i saw this beautiful french antique table one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollar antique French table that was only about 30 inches around and it had this finish on it it had this finish where it was old painted gilded antique cracked it was beautiful if I can find the picture because I have one little picture of it I'll see if Greg can add it in one of the little snaps um, and I wanted to try to reproduce that and so I took this table after we stripped it and then I came in and I crackled it sanded it added gold gilding wax and then I added gold leaf and I kept sanding and distressing it. I really love it and Greg likes it. I don't know that he loves it but he likes it and he doesn't really care much about it because when we put the chairs in front of it you really can't see it unless I pull them out and I show you guys. The other thing I did and I'm still working on it. And how much did you pay for it? Oh four hundred dollars. That's why I like it. <laughs> you like it? Yeah that's right. And then the other thing that I did was when I antiqued the side piece right here, I just felt like this space was crying out for this. Now, this isn't done. I need to add the crackle and the gold leafing to it and then sand it and rub it off. But this, you guys, I ordered off of uh, Amazon a little mold and some paper clay. And I made these. And then I glued them on. And now I'm going to age them out a little bit more and play with them. Um, that's just fun. I kind of think I need to add one here in between and go all the way across. Greg is not a fan of these that much, but once again, once the chairs are at the table, you really can't see them. And uh, he loves me, so he lets me do what I want. And that's the coolest thing. Um, guys, I want to encourage you to try new things. Don't be scared to try something new and crazy. Um, I'm gonna probably have one more video, maybe two, where I'm actually gonna give you guys some numbers, like sizes of stuff. Because when I was looking for help on YouTube in different places on how to actually take old furniture and convert it into cabinetry, I couldn't find a lot of information, like numbers, right? And that's gonna be what's gonna happen in the next video. And it's all hopefully gonna be attached all on one YouTube channel spot. And I hope that it's really helpful and I hope it blesses you guys and encourages you to try something new and different. You guys have a good day. Hey guys, so this is hopefully my final little video and it's been weeks since I did the other one. It's just we started a whole project and made a mess of the whole house. So we just got it all cleaned up again and I want to talk to you a little about the reality of making cabinetry out of old antique furniture. Things that I've learned, um, things that I hope will help you if you decide to do something like this. Um, first off, you need to know some very, um, just real numbers when it comes to designing the kitchen. All of our appliances, basically, and I'm gonna come over here to my stove, are designed in mind that you're gonna have 24 inch depth cabinets, okay? This bottom piece of furniture right here is 24, or it should be 24 inches deep. Mine is actually 25, and I'm gonna show you in a minute that we're gonna to have to fix that. But the hard thing that it is when you're out in the wild shopping for cabinetry or like a piece of furniture, like this was a one piece wall unit and this sat on top of this. Um, china cabinets, I've seen beautiful china cabinets repurposed into coffee bars, right? 
but in most of the pictures that I've seen, they haven't tried to use it as countertops next to a stove, refrigerator, or a dishwasher, okay? When you're gonna do that, when you're shopping for your pieces of antique furniture, you need to make sure they are 24 inches deep because they have to line up. If this cabinetry, because most of them are about 15, was 15 inches deep, it would be back here. So when you're out shopping and you wanna do something like that, bear that in mind, okay? So another thing is upper cabinets come out 12 inches from your wall. These came out about 18 inches when it was sitting down here. So we had to know that Greg felt comfortable cutting six inches off the back. So when he was looking at this piece of furniture, when it was one library cabinet, he had to make sure that this had a bottom and it was like the integrity of the cabinet was strong enough to have the back cut off and then put back on. I don't think he used the original back. I think he used a very strong piece of plywood because a lot of the backs of upper cabinets are tongue and groove pieces of board. And that's not super strong in some ways as having one nice big piece of um, plywood that you can actually mount to the wall and be consistent. So um, on these cabinets, um, this part right here comes out that we had a lot of moldings protruding. You want to bear that in mind. But the other thing you have to bear in mind is see this curved corner right here in the way that they sit back. It took up space in the inside of these cabinets to be able to put plates. Okay, so in regular box cabinetry that you would buy at a store, your cabinet box is 12 inches. And then, so that means the level on the shelf inside are usually 12 inches deep. When you're doing this sometimes, then the door applies to the outside. So the door depth is probably closer to 13, but the box is 12. I know that's kind of some crazy numbers, but we have a problem on this cabinetry over here. And we're gonna come over here. I had these custom made and evidently I wasn't super clear, maybe when I was explaining what I wanted. These doors set inside the cabinetry, right? They set inside the cabinetry and they don't mount outside. So that means I lost three quarters of an inch of space inside my cabinet. And I wish I would have known that because I'm having an issue, this is my coffee bar, getting plates to fit, I have large plates to fit inside this cabinet. So these we made 15 inches and I can fit all my plates in here, right? A good thing that I did that, but I wish that I would have thought about it and made these cabinets come out as though it was a door to the 13 so that I could fit stuff in. These are things that I have learned <laughs> And I don't want you to make the same mistakes. So cabinet boxes should be 12 if you're gonna mount the doors on the outside. Possibly if you're gonna do an inset door like this, you might wanna bring them out to 13. Does that mean, I hope that's making sense to you guys because it's kind of crazy. Um, another thing that I learned is about walk space when you're planning islands. And this is something you may be telling me, Paige, we all know that, this is just common knowledge. But I've helped a lot of people design kitchens or talk them through it, and they don't realize the numbers that you need to have for walk space, and that they are adjustable in some cases, but you wanna have at least 36 inches from your cabinet to your next cabinet, okay? Um, but that can change up. If you wanna add a stool and be able to have people sitting here, you're gonna probably need more than 36 inches. I think in this case right here, my stove protrudes out more. I think I have about 38 inches from my stove to here and probably closer to 42 from here to here. But these numbers, when you're designing, everyone wants to have a nice island. That's like really a big deal in the kitchen. It's super great. Um, but sometimes that's going to determine how wide your island can be. So on this side of my thing, I'm once again, I have a walk space and I have a piece of furniture and I need to have chairs to be able to move. Okay. So the numbers in my kitchen, just so that you can have some idea of the scale. So I find on HDTV and a lot of these design shows, they don't give you the numbers so you can go, okay, that space feels spacious, but they're using these wide angle lenses. And then you watch one of the people walk in and all of a sudden you can tell that they could do this and touch both sides of the kitchen almost. It's really not a big space. So my kitchen is 15 feet wide. The whole room is 30 feet long. That includes my dining room. This 
This wall right here between the windows is 14 feet. And I think in the other video, I had shared that I have four, four, and four. So this section is 12. Greg, you wanna, well, let's look at the mercantile and then we'll go back there. This mercantile cabinet is six feet wide. Um, and it also is a really cool piece too, is that this base is 24 inches deep. So it feels like a substantial piece of furniture and that makes a difference with all of my storage at the bottom. Now on this piece, I wasn't really bound to having to have the 24 inches deep. I just got lucky with that. Um, also, the um, height right here, I didn't talk about the depth for, um, I'm having a loss for words. The backsplash depth behind your cabinets right here, when you're doing real cabinets, it's 18 inches. Where my refrigerator is and my stove and all those, we had to raise those up to have an 18 inch space because most of your coffee makers and appliances that are gonna sit out are made to go under 18 inches. This one's not, this one's 12 inches. And so I had to really search for these drawers to make sure they fit. We could have separated this piece and mounted it, but we didn't want to. We were okay with not doing it because I didn't plan on having any electricity back here where I would need to run appliances. This really is my pantry space and these drawers really do house cereal and rice and spaghetti and this right here is the favorite drawer in the house this is like the cookie drawer uh it gets lots of use he also has a candy drawer um so i'm learning a lot about space planning and i just wanted to encourage you guys to really think it through if you're going to use old cabinets for your kitchen over here in the dining room area we have a round table okay and that was a decision we made and I had to make sure I kind of followed that three foot rule. My table from here to here is three foot so that I can walk behind it and have a chair here, which did. Um, it is almost five feet wide and it fills the space so we can kind of walk around it. And um, I liked this over the, um, the table. Um, this right here is super shallow. This allows for room here. I couldn't have put the 24 inch depth here. I had to go shallow. This is actually the top of an old French cabinet. This would have literally, my cabinet door's open here, let me close it up. This would have literally been up tall and there would have been a whole nother cabinet underneath it. I never saw that by the time I bought this, it was like this. And Greg had to add little feet to the bottom of it to get it off the ground. But this would have been the top of a cabinet. So don't think you have to use things for what they were originally made for. You can take things and you can turn them into base cabinets. Sometimes it's just adding a little feet at the bottom. Um, I hope that all of these videos have helped you guys. But wait, I forgot one thing. My husband made this amazing hood vent. And when I was going through the kitchen, I did not talk about this hood vent. And I want to talk about it for a minute before we go and let you guys go. At the top, that is the old tin from this building. This was such a um, scary thing for us to build because we really had no idea how working with the tin was going to be. Was it too fragile? Could we get it to curve? This is the first time we've ever worked with a 48 inch range. And we were bought the, the insert, the hood vent that actually gets the smell and the smoke out of your house, was super deep. So um, I give you all those numbers on this cabinet needs to be 12 to 13 inches. and. All of the numbers that you could feel kind of um, claustrophobic if it perks out too far. Well, this right here comes out almost 20 inches, Greg. Um, Close. It's 18 to 20, and it's it in. When we were working on it downstairs, it looked humongous. And one of the things Greg wanted to do, we had to go around back and forth about, was do we continue going straight up? Or would he curve it and make it more shallow at the top as soon as we got past the depth of the hood vent? And um, could we curve it? So this was a big old build, a big experiment. We used the old tin and the space between the bottom of your hood vent and the top of your scope is anywhere from 30 to 36 inches. I always go to the 36, even if the manufacturer of these things suggests otherwise, I go to 36. I don't fry a lot in my house, and that's something you know. We don't even fry hardly at all. It's basically just to get the smell out of my house. I'm not smoking up stuff. Um, but so this is at 36. So this is 36, and then this is 36. So basically, good vents in my house hang at six feet in the air. 
We were so scared that this protrusion right here was gonna take over the kitchen and look horrible. But by the time he got it upstairs and we got it mounted, because he curved the tent and brought it back, it really doesn't overwhelm the room. We were very scared about that. The other thing I wanted to talk about is these things back here. They're just cute and decorative, but you do you and you find cute things if you like. Um, you gotta clean them, but that's okay. Um, find things that make you happy, that make you smile. Um, if you like the adventure of going out into the thrift stores and the flea markets and the antique stores and shopping and finding treasures, then it's just fun. Greg and I love that. We have a great time. I'm going to give you one more little advice and then I'm going to shut up and let you guys just um, absorb or try to take some of this in. These light fixtures that I have up here, can you show these? These light fixtures, when it comes to shopping online, it's very um, confusing at times and the prices are crazy. And I have learned that if you start shopping online, Googling different descriptions of things, you need to do it for a few days and keep shopping. Because evidently the people who have the expensive stuff pay to have their ads pushed first. And if you keep shopping and you keep stopping and kind of looking at certain things, I don't know what goes on inside those algorithms on eBay, but they're tracking it and they know what you like. And if you keep looking and you keep kind of putting your search engine a little bit different, um, they start kind of knowing a pattern and when you're not biting and buying those expensive items or I don't know the time frame of how many times they paid to have theirs shown first, where's out, I don't know how it works. I just know if you keep shopping, sometimes all of a sudden about day two, three, four, they start showing you some of the same pictures at cheaper prices. Now these pictures are probably one of the most crazy things I've ever bought. These are from overstock.com in the black color that you see mine are right now, they are 900 and something dollars. At least they were last time I looked each. The same exact light picture, I think they're by Hinkley, the same exact light picture in Chrome was $320. Guys, you can spray paint just about anything. I took these light pictures for $300 and I took them in the backyard with a can of flat black spray paint and I spray painted them. And they look exactly like their sisters that were 900 and something. So don't be scared to do some crazy things to try to um, get what you want and not have to pay that huge price. Um, if you have any questions about anything, I'd be happy to answer. I'll be happy to um, share anything that I know, tell you where I found some of these pieces. Just message me. Um, I love to help people and tell them anything that I know and help you have the kitchen of your dreams. You guys just go um, have fun, make your house your home, and um, just be excited. You guys have a great day and blessings. I'm back. I forgot something that I really found was super helpful for me and that's this countertop right here. So all of the conversation about the library cabinet splitting it, when we lifted this, we had no countertop. We had to fix that. And it's a kitchen and I wanted marble. And there's a lot of old antique cabinetry that has a white marble countertop on it. A lot of them have pink also. I've seen some pink marble countertops. But I needed to put a marble countertop on this. And I went to like countertop places that do marble. And that marble is thick. Can you show this? It's really thicker. And this actually isn't even as thick as some of it. And this is not the look that old antique furniture would have. This is like cabinetry marble. I wanted it to look like old, like this could have came on here, like this piece had marble on it. And so I got lucky. I was walking around floor and decor in New Orleans, but there's also one in Baton Rouge, and they are now selling 24 inch wide by 48 inches, or two foot by four foot pieces of marble. This marble is a square when you buy it, okay? Our piece of furniture had this curve in it. And Kidder Industries in Bayou Vista has a water jet cutter and they can cut it to fit exactly on your piece of furniture. Now, in my earlier video, I told you that we had a 25 inch piece of furniture and this is 24. So let me show you a little situation I got myself in. My marble is an inch too short. Now, I know that, and I'm showing you that, but if I hadn't brought this over here in the camera, you probably would have never noticed. 
But now Greg and I are on a treasure hunt because there's a lot of these old cabinets like this that have a little raised wooden back piece. It's usually a little carved piece. It stands up probably about an inch to two inches and it probably comes up in the middle, maybe the two to three inches. And it's like this little carved piece that goes along the back. That is what I'm looking for. But I need two identical ones. The odds of finding that are not great. Greg feels like we should just fill it in with a nice, just like piece of the um, cypress from the house and just be done with it. Um, I'll probably end up doing that, but then I'll probably embellish it with some type of little thing so that it looks like one of those old pieces or find some old architectural pieces that I can apply to a piece of wood that would be matching. That's probably what's gonna happen. But this countertop is four feet, basically. I think maybe it's like 46 inches, I'm not exactly sure. But these sell for anywhere from $50 to $80 a piece. So that's this was now about a month or two ago, probably the end of the summer when I was purchasing them. Um, depending on the color of the marble that you want, if it's super white or if it has a lot of lines in it, it goes up between $50 and $60 for the piece up to $80 for the piece, depending on what you want and what they have in stock. They're heavy, heavy, heavy. And you want to be careful bringing them home because they can't crack. But this was one of the greatest finds that I've ever found. And we've used it for countertops in our bathroom vanities that we have taken in, um, from antique pieces of furniture. Our countertop in our laundry room is a piece of this. Any place that I needed an inexpensive countertop, I now have marble. And I think they're getting more and more colors in. I'm not sure if they have black yet, but they have gray and they have white. So good luck. I hope you guys find something. If you have an old antique piece of furniture with a messed up top, you don't even have to refinish them anymore. You can just get your pretty piece of marble, put it right on top, and it will look amazing. Okay, that's my last video, I think. You guys have a great day.